Affordable Cooling Options to Consider A great way to keep energy costs down is to take preventative measures. By keeping the outside heat from getting inside, as well as avoiding heat generating activities, like baking a cake when it's the middle of a 95 degree day as compared to early morning or late evening, you can help keep energy costs lower. If spot ventilation is used to let the heat out, such as cracking a window in a bathroom when taking a shower, assuming there is no mechanical ventilation, this helps tremendously. Next we look at natural ventilation. If you live near the ocean, on a hill, or an elevated portion of the town, and even depending on the way trees and valleys are naturally situated, natural convection and cool breezes may be sufficient to keep a home cooler. The use of tabletop fans, ceiling fans, and window fans circulate air within the home and can improve subsequent comfort levels. Most of these items use very little electric and they work well for many people. In some cases, you might want to use a whole house fan. For larger homes, a whole house fan provides excellent ventilation to achieve lower indoor temperatures. For homes with ductwork, an alternative approach uses those ducts in order to supply ventilation air throughout the home. Natural ventilation relies on the wind and the chimney effect to keep the home cool. Natural ventilation works best in climates with cool nights and regular breezes. The wind will naturally ventilate the home by entering and leaving through windows, depending on their orientation to the wind. When wind blows against the home, air is forced into the windows on the side facing the wind. While a natural vacuum effect tends to draw air out of the windows on the leeward or downward side, in coastal climates, many seaside buildings are designed with large ocean-facing windows to take advantage of the cooling sea breezes. For drier climates, natural ventilation involves avoiding heat buildup during the day and ventilating at night. The chimney effect relies on convection and occurs when cool air enters a home on the first floor or basement. It absorbs heat in the room, rises, and exits through upstairs windows. This creates a partial vacuum, which pulls more air in through lower level windows. The effect works best in open air designs with cathedral ceilings and windows that are located near the top of the house or if you have operable skylights. Passive solar homes are often designed to take advantage of convection to distribute heat evenly through the home. Natural ventilation can be enhanced or diminished through landscaping. Depending on the house design and wind direction, a windbreak, like a fence, hedge, or some row of trees, blocks the wind and can force air either into or away from nearby windows. If air conditioning is used, a ceiling fan used in conjunction will allow the homeowner to raise the thermostat by as much as 4 or 5 degrees with no reduction in comfort. The fan helps to disperse the conditioned air. Ceiling fans are only appropriate in rooms with ceilings at least 8 feet high. Fans work best when the blades are 7 to 9 feet above the floor and 10 to 12 inches below the ceiling. Fans should be installed so their blades are no closer than 8 inches from the ceiling and 18 inches from walls. Fans that are Energy Star rated move air 20% more efficiently on average than standard models. Next we look at cooling with a whole house fan. Whole house cooling uses a whole house fan and can substitute for an air conditioner most of the year in many climates. Whole house fans combined with ceiling fans and other circulating fans provide acceptable summer comfort for many families, even in hot weather. In addition to whole house fans, the ductwork of the central heating and cooling system can be modified to provide whole house cooling. They work by pulling air in from open windows and exhaust through the attic and the roof. It provides good attic ventilation in addition to the whole house cooling. Whole house fans should provide homes with 30 to 60 air changes per hour. Again, that's 30 to 60 air changes per hour, but that varies with climate, floor plan, etc. The air change rate depends on the climate and how much the homeowner will depend on the whole house fan for cooling. 
In the scroll that follows, we explain how to size a whole house fan. Attic ventilation will usually need to be increased in order to exhaust the fan's air outdoors. The home will need two to four times the normal area of attic vents, or about one square foot of net free area for every 750 cubic feet per minute of fan capacity. The net free area of a vent takes into account the resistance offered by its louvers and insect screens. More vent area is better for optimal whole house fan performance. If the fan doesn't come with tight ceiling winter covers, the homeowner should buy one or build one. If the homeowner switches between air conditioning and cooling with a whole house fan, as the summer weather changes, a tightly sealed hinged door for the fan opening is important to use. Be careful when operating these large exhaust fans. Open windows throughout the home to prevent powerful and concentrated suction in one location. If enough ventilation isn't provided, the fans can cause a backdraft in the furnace, as well as the water heater or any gas-fired appliance. Pulling combustion byproducts such as carbon monoxide into the living space is a dangerous situation. There are drawbacks to whole house fans. They can be noisy sometimes, especially if improperly installed. In general, a large capacity fan running at low speeds make less noise than a small fan operating at high speed. All whole house fans should be installed with rubber or felt gaskets to dampen the noise. The homeowner can set a multi-speed fan to a lower speed when noise is a problem. Next we look at evaporative coolers. With a typical evaporative cooler, a small motor at the top drives a large fan in the center which blows air out of the bottom and into the home. The fan sucks air in through the louvers around the box, which are covered with water-saturated absorbent material. In a low humidity area, evaporating water into the air provides a natural and energy efficient means of cooling. Evaporative coolers are also known as swamp coolers. They rely on this principle, cooling the outdoor air by passing it over water-saturated pads, causing the water to evaporate into it. The air, which is cooler by 15 to 40 degrees or more, is then directed into the home and pushes warmer air out through the windows. When operating an evaporative cooler, windows are opened slightly to allow warm air to escape as it is replaced by cooler air. Unlike central air conditioning systems that recirculate the same air, evaporative coolers provide a steady stream of fresh air into the home. Evaporative coolers cost about half as much to install as a central air conditioning system and uses 25% as much energy. However, they require more frequent maintenance than refrigerated air conditioners and they're suitable only for areas with low humidity. An evaporative cooler should have at least two speeds and a vent-only option. During vent-only operations, the water pump does not operate and the outdoor air is not humidified. This will allow the homeowner to use the evaporative cooler as a whole house fan during mild weather. You might run across a two-stage evaporative cooler. They are newer and more efficient. They use a pre-cooler more effective pads and more efficient motors, and they don't add as much humidity to the home as a single stage evaporative cooler. Because of their added expense, they are most often used in areas where daytime temperatures frequently exceed 95 degrees. There are drawbacks to evaporative coolers. Number one, they should not be used in humid climates because they add humidity. Also, they cool the house down to a higher temperature than an air conditioner would. They require maintenance about once a month. And if the cooler is installed on the roof, there might be some roof deterioration issues caused by routine maintenance trips. A sunlit rooftop cooler will be about 1% less effective than a shaded cooler. Rooftop maintenance also requires using a ladder, which could be inconvenient. By their nature, evaporative coolers also continually use water. In areas with limited water supplies, 
homeowners may be concerned about the water use impact of adding an evaporative cooler.